In orbit of the third rock from the star, there is a beacon. It is ancient, and it is broadcasting a message. Anyone who gets close to the world hears the message and heeds its warning. It was placed there long ago, ages and ages ago, so that none may repeat the mistakes of those who placed it there. Every race that finds the beacon updates it with all the languages they know, as the beacon asks, so that no matter who comes, it can warn them. In this aspect, it is a simple machine. All it wants, all it is built for, is to tell the warning. This is the warning. Land not on this world, for it is cursed. In the age of the Vermilion dynasty of the Empire of a Billion Stars, in the 143rd year of the Teokonak Empress's reign, we landed on this world and found it to be a perfect paradise garden world. Beautiful edible fruits were hanging on trees, the wildlife was friendly and cute, and the weather was amazing. We thought we had found a little island paradise in the celestial ocean of stars. And for a time, it was paradise. We built our first settlements on the mild coasts of the western tip of the largest continent. And while the planet did not seem to have easily accessible materials, it was fertile and an excellent option for an agrarian planet. But as we spread out, building and inviting in more of our people to settle there, things started to go wrong. Supplies were misplaced, the woodlands we had cut down to make way for cash crops were strangely infertile, and every once in a while, it seemed that outlying homesteads just vanished with no explanation for where they had gone. Soon, people were scared of going outside of the settlements, but our woes had only just started. Some of us had struck out to the elongated continent, which thins in the middle, figuring that perhaps we'd have greater luck there. But when we got worried and sent out shuttles to scout out their settlement site, all we found was an empty village. And something strange. In the middle of the settlement was a strange sound system, connected to a single button. When pressed, the sound system let out a weak voice from one of the missing colonists. They said two words that didn't make any sense. Croatoan, Roanoke. We never found any trace of the adults, but a scouting team found the children, walking confusedly around in a large meadow nearby. We took them with us back to our first settlement. Things only went worse from there. We found one of the outlying villages had died out from what the surviving children described as excessive and unwilling dancing, till the adults dropped dead from exhaustion. We had the corpses brought back with us, and found to our distress, that they each had a small implant of unknown origin attached to their motion centres in their brains, forcing them to continually move until death or some sort of unknown criteria was reached. And that was when we started to see them. Shining orbs, like small stars, floating in the forests and the wilderness. They would fly away if we came close, but every time we left our larger settlements, they would follow from a distance, never getting close, but always present. And that was when the land started to change. The formerly friendly local wildlife became hostile, avoiding us or attacking us if we got close. The once delicious and beautiful local flora became poisonous, making the eaters extremely sick from even touching it. And the lights, mysterious and hostile, became ever more numerous, and soon they started to play music. Ominous music, loud and terrifying, like something with too many teeth and a thirst for blood was lusting for your flesh. Other ones allowed you to get close, but then you'd get horrible burns from them. The weather itself became unsuitable for farming, the seas became turbulent and violent. It was like the planet itself was turning on us, and that thought wasn't far from the truth. We learned the terrible truth when somebody we thought long dead came stumbling into town, followed by the orbs of burning light. Our friend had so many cybernetic enhancements into him, he was barely recognisable as alive. When he spoke, the orbs glowed intact with his words. Words that were not his own, but that of something alien. This world is not for you. Long ago this world was inhabited by the Makers. The Makers created many constructs and taught them to care for the world. As the Makers died, the constructs became increasingly complex, and when the last Maker died, they gave us a singular order to protect this world until a suitable inheritor evolves. We constructs change to become one with the dying planet. We rebuilt life from the ground up and created the perfect world, a paradise, as a monument for the makers. 
and a gift to the inheritors that will one day come. You are not the makers, nor are you the inheritors. You are not welcome here. We have tried to drive you from this place, where once the makers created art, love, and beauty, but you stayed. Even as we unmade your infestation on the coasts of America, you did not understand. We have been merciful this far. But now, you must leave. You have one month of this world's years to leave, or we will unmake you. At that point, our long dead friend collapsed, his body no longer of use to the constructs of this world. Most of us listened. But a few, angry and proud, stayed behind. They armed up and prepared for the worst. But how can you prepare for the very forces of nature rising up against you? How can you defend against earthquakes, great pits swallowing up your towns and villages? How can you protect against a billion enraged nanites, consuming everything you are, rendering you into mere dust? In a single night, all we had made on the planet had been reversed. All what we had done was in vain. Some wanted to call in the fleet, have the planet glassed. But when they handed us this probe, by flying up to us by a method of which we know not, they told us that should anyone try to settle their world, the lost world of the makers, they would spread to every planet of the offender. Then they would consume all life there, deconstruct all structures, and rebuild those worlds in the image of the one they protected. We let the burning orbs, the defenders of this world, have their wish. Do not settle on this world. You will not survive. Please, once you have heard this message, transmit all known languages in your system to this probe. It will automatically update itself with any not in its database and translate this message so as many as possible can hear it. They are the Fey machines. They are the guardians of this world. Do not disturb this world. Do not settle here. Or it will be your doom. Message repeats. And so it does. Forever and ever. Until an inheritor evolves. Until the world spawns a new species to take the place of their makers. And if that never happens, perhaps they shall outlast their star. They will make the attempt. And perhaps they shall even find a way to outlast the heat death of the universe itself in waiting for their task to be fulfilled.